The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, open the word of truth to Romans 12, verse 17, page 16 of your notes. Romans 12, 17. All right, once again, this is your opportunity to uh, implement the formula uh, laid down in James. You can put this different ways in Scripture. Uh, he has, therefore, putting aside James 121, all that remains of wickedness aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility receive the word implanted or engrafted which is able to deliver your souls deliver from what from loss and shame at the coming of Christ but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. So let's take the usual time to, if we need to lay aside the sin nature, you know how to do it. You got 1 John 1, 9 in your frame of reference and uh, use it as often as you need to uh, during the session. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we assemble ourselves together in obedience to your word so that we continue to stay, so that we can continue to stay the course in these momentous and incredibly evil times. Thank you for this opportunity to be here and have the resources to hear this portion of your word. We pray that we'll understand it and live under it. In Christ's name, amen. All right, in the series here that concludes these admonitions uh, that Paul has presented to, Paul has presented, presented to the Roman church, we come down to this last section dealing with one topic, the topic of revenge. And uh, he tells these believers, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Never is an adjective, my dice. Evil is kakos, for evil. Uh, for is auntie in the place of evil, for evil. Payback is the present participle acting as an imperative, apodidomi. It means to, in different contexts, to repay somebody for something legitimately. Uh, here it is, pay back or return evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. The word respect is a present, again, a participle, uh, acting as an imperative, proneo, have a mind to, uh, and uh, what is right, what is good. This is the other word for good in the, the adjective, kalos. Uh, in the presence, and opion is a preposition, in the presence of all men. Anthropos. If possible. Particle if. Possible. Able, the word dunatos, the adjective, if possible, so far as it depends on you. <clears throat> this is kind of a qualifier, if possible, so far as it depends on you. 
uh, it, preposition ek, from, from you, uh, be at peace with all, meta all men, anthropos again, be at peace is the present participle acting as an imperative, uh, ira neuo, neuo, be at peace. Never take your own revenge. We have the negative. Uh, your own is the reflexive pronoun, how to. Your own revenge. Never take your own revenge. This is the present participle acting as an imperative. Ek dikeo. This is the word to avenge. Never take your own revenge, beloved. <clears throat> but, strong adversative, leave room, leave a place, give a place, aorist, active, actual, imperative, second plural, didomy, give a place, and this is a good translation here, idiomatically, leave room for the wrath, orge, with the article, for the wrath of God is in italics, but give, leave room for the wrath. We know that it is of God, but it is not in the original, it's, but it's the sense. For it is written, <clears throat> for it is written, the authority of scripture is here presented, in this case, an Old Testament verse that is timeless. For it is written, perfect passive indicative, uh, perfect tense, existing results, it is written, Vengeance. The noun vengeance is ek di, dikesis. This means retribution. Translated here, vengeance. Vengeance is mine. Pronoun, ego, I will repay. The word I will is a future. At some point down the road, I will repay. Future indicative on Anta podidomi, I will repay, says present indicative of the verb to say, the Lord, without the article, kurios. 20, another citation. Giving an example, and this, of course, this quotation is from the Old Testament, and in the society and culture and times, uh, it, it could happen today, but it could be something else. It is simply an example of treating uh, someone who has wronged you uh, and, and, in a significant way. But if your enemy is hungry, but if hungry, pinao, present active subjunctive, <clears throat> the word enemy is ek, ekthros. Feed, present active imperative, posomizo, feed him. If he is thirsty, present subjunctive, difao, to be thirsty, give him a drink. Present imperative, potizo, means to give a drink to him. For in so doing, <clears throat> for in so doing, present participle, you will heap, you will heap, the verb is future active indicative, so ruo, you will heap burning coals, coals or charcoal of fire. Interesting that the word translated coals or charcoal. I don't know why it is, but it's anthrax. Well, that's the Greek pronunciation. I don't think, I'm, I'm not saying it has anything to do with the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, condition of anthrax, <laughs> but just, just struck me here. For in, do so in, in, in so doing, you will heap burning coals on, upon, 
kephale, his head. And then uh, wrapping it up, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil. Uh, negative may, overcome, present imperative. Nikao means to overcome. It's a verb for victory, uh, to be victorious, and so forth. Uh, Nikao, we have a shoe brand that's a takeoff on that called Nike, Greek word for victory. See, you learned something today. <laughs> Do not be overcome by evil. The adjective kakos, but strong adversity, overcome evil, present imperative, nikao, overcome evil with good. <clears throat> All right. Excuse me. Uh, but overcome the evil, kakos, with the good. And then here at the end of it, we have the superior word for good, agathos, good of intrinsic value. One, to not render evil for evil means that we are not under any circumstances to indulge in vindictive retaliation. If we are the objects of some form of abuse. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 <clears throat> where he, Paul says, see that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. That's the high calling. That's the high calling of the royal family. The royal family uh, and our, the norms and standards we are to have. This is not something <coughs> that the cosmos uh, generally would obviously follow. <clears throat> they would try to find a way to get back, get even, all that stuff that you hear all the time. <clears throat> First Peter, uh, First Peter 3, 9. Not returning evil for evil or insult for insult. That'd be a verbal come back, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for this very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Two, self-defense is bona fide. We're not talking here about protecting yourself if you're under attack or calling the police. You have a right to defend yourself. That's a biblical principle, but we're not, Aside from all that, so uh, the first command that leads off into this, we are never to premeditate returning evil for evil. Let it go. Move on. Many people, a lot of people, did a lot of bad things said towards Jesus and he didn't retaliate. He did not retaliate. He set the example. The next command, the second part of verse 17, has to do with our behavior before the cosmos. Always a challenge. Uh, and we're dealing with the cosmos here, not like emulating the cosmos, but recognizing that in the world, there are people that know what appropriate behavior is on the part of people. They know this. We are to conduct ourselves in such a way as to elicit the approval of people. I don't mean pandering to people, catering to their human viewpoint. I'm talking about the kind of good manners and behavior that we should exhibit before those that are outside in the world that we come across under a variety of circumstances, at work, wherever. We are to be law-abiding 
and respectful of the laws of the land, 2 Corinthians 8.21. We're going to get into that in detail coming up in the next chapter. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8.21, for, for we have regard for what is honorable, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men, where the two are, are on the same level. Six, failure in this regard brings reproach upon the body of Christ, whether they know you're a Christian or not. <clears throat> the exhortation to live at peace with all men, verse 18, carries with it a reservation. We are to strive to live to pe in peace with our neighbors, people we run across, have to do business with and deal with, if at all possible. It doesn't mean we have to be completely stupid about this. We are to try to live in peace. Some people are completely incorrigible. And uh, again, in all these things, God will give the believer who is focused on doing his will under an attack of some sort or whatever it is, will give the believer the wherewithal to do the right thing. The words, if possible, indicates that it may not always be possible to live at peace. Because there are circumstances where they persist and the nature of it and all the other factors that you can't justify trying to live at peace because of the very nature of it. We do not have to ever sacrifice the directive will of God to live at peace with certain individuals. We simply do not have to do that. <clears throat> Both passive and active resistance is legitimate. There, are, there is a place to resist evil actions on the part of people, taking the appropriate, the appropriate approach. But in any case, we're to do everything reasonable to live at peace with the cosmos. Twelve, never should discord be traced to us. <clears throat> in verse 19, by addressing the Roman saints as beloved, Paul is solicitous of them not to take their own revenge. He throws in the adjective beloved. They are, they are beloved of God and they are beloved of the apostle. So he is solicitous of them. It's like, it's not begging, but it's like, come on, beloved, let's, let's, let's rise to the occasion. These Christians living in Rome, in the culture of Rome, they were, they were going to come under a lot of derisive, bad-mouthing to their face even, and other kinds of activity. The Roman culture and the Roman pagan world didn't think kindly of these Christians who they considered to be not good citizens. So these Christians get an opportunity to show that they are good Christians. There are things that pagans do they, that they say, oh, I approve of that. I approve of, 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 of law-abiding type people following the rules and, 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 and all these other factors, the hard working and other adjectives and things you can add. And they would observe this in these Christians. And these Christians didn't run around with some attitude. Yeah, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And I'm not budging from that. This is the, this is the, this is the truth. You need, to, you need to seriously consider this for yourself. So in some societies, like the Roman society, where Christianity is in its uh, infancy, 
uh, it, was, it, it dropped right into the middle of, of this. And here are these people who uh, no longer engage in idol worship or some of the rituals or some of the festivities with all their pagan uh, trappings. They don't do that. They don't go there anymore. This is also brought out in Peter, that, that, that some of them are amazed. They knew you before. They knew when you were uh, this uh, uh, full-blown, partying, hell-raising type, and, and you won't go with them anymore. You won't accept the invitation to go to their uh, house of feasting or partying or car carrying on. <clears throat> so there is a reaction uh, that comes from the society at large, uh, definitely comes from negative family. And we've seen here in, in our church, in our history, believers who were persecuted by other Christians simply because they were serious about this church and the doctrine taught here. But they still treated him right. In the case of a mother and a father, they still treated him right. They, you know, uh, on occasion, they got together with him for their anniversary or something. But they didn't skip Bible class so they could get together for something they cranked up on a Bible class night. We'll see you after class. Well, I just set them off. But you're setting, see, so you're, you're trying to live at peace with, with somebody and uh, have your little get together because it's your mom and your dad and they invited you over. I'm just using an illustration. Could be sister, brother, all these. <clears throat> so uh, this is how Paul demonstrates his affection beloved, and parental concern to these believers. 15, we are to leave matters in God's hands when at all possible. Walk off. Water off a duck's bill. It's just words. It's some nasty action. They can't change the plan of God so leaving matters in God's hands when at all possible. Believers have suffered public reproach and ridicule at a very high level more than we have around here as far as I know. It is a criminal, if a criminal offense is committed against us, report it to the authorities. That's what you're to do. If someone does something like that, then they need to be reported to the authorities. If they uh, threaten your person, attack your property, or anything like that, they need to be reported. They're committing crimes. That isn't, that isn't taking your own revenge. That's simply putting it in the hands of the establishment authorities so they can take action as it is their responsibility to exercise God's wrath against crime. God's wrath is manifested in different ways. One way is when the establishment comes down on the criminal element. That's, and they go to jail, the extreme are executed. They are administering legitimately God's wrath. They have authority to administer wrath and take a life or put someone in prison, or fine them, or whatever they do. They've got authority to do that. They've got boundaries they need to abide by. It needs to be proven and demonstrated beyond a shadow of a doubt, if necessary, before a jury of your peers, and the evidence can be presented. They are executing God's wrath against everything from misdemeanors up the ladder. So that would be an example of the observation of God's wrath. The law allows for self-defense. 
I didn't cite the scripture here, but Jesus told his disciples, because they're going to be out on the roads traveling, taking the gospel from one, one village to the next. And he said, if you have two cloaks, sell one and get yourself a sidearm, a sword. You have a right to defend yourself if you are physically attacked because there were, there were robbers and various things on these roads and they needed to be able to have uh, this weapon. This is a basic human right to be able to defend yourself. And now, of course, it's gone up where we have firearms and things of this nature. How is an elderly woman, when someone kicks her front door in, how is she going to defend herself? Well, with a 357 Magnum or something like that. That'll stop him. That, that is a legitimate, that is a legitimate, but we're not dealing with that at this point. Uh, the wrath mentioned here is God's wrath over evildoers. Paul supports this admonition with an appeal to Scripture. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what I do and what you do here at Maranatha Church. We appeal to the Word of God. Chapter and verse. Here's the documentation for behavior and theology. Deuteronomy 32, 3235 is an assertion of divine prerogative. God, who is completely righteous, one of his attributes, he is completely righteous, he is all-powerful, he is just, and he always has all the facts. He has it all. He doesn't have to do any investigation. He knows it. So he can act and prescribe the appropriate punishment over the person. We know this from the doctrine of divine discipline. The DD should fit the offense. There is extreme divine discipline. And then, and then there's minor stuff, you know. <clears throat> like someone once said, yeah, I was on the phone gossiping. Hung up the phone, turned around, the cabinet door was opened, and I cracked my head on it. I put a big bump on it. There was your DD. It's over. It's done. It's finished. You can rebound the sin. And, and go rolling on with a bump on your forehead for that until it goes down. Okay? God makes the punishment fit the crime. And so for evildoers, he does this too. We're not to try and play God, but cast our cares on him when evil is rendered against us. All too often, we got to render insult for insult, don't we? We just can't keep our mouth shut, even if the insult is true. See? We have to, we have, to have a verbal retaliation. God has all the facts, and he has the full ability to bring divine judgment against those who seek to harm us. However they try to do it, whatever, whatever uh, it is involved that they're doing. So if you are, or like, I, like I've always said, the pattern is this. You get the doctrine and then you get the test. Let's see if you can pass it. You may or you may not. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. You can pick yourself up and... Try to do better the next time. If someone gives you trouble, oh, you go to that church. Oh, they, they believe the earth is flat. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, I go to that church, and yes, I believe that for very good, sound reasons, sir. Or whatever it is they say. I've had people mock me 
from my own congregation as they were leaving. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not going to flip them off. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do anything like that. It's on their head. <clears throat> if they want to disrespect the spiritual authority that they had a great regard for for all these years, that's their problem. I don't wish bad on them. I, I just wish, I wish they'd get their act together, but I, I, it's in God's hands to deal with them. So when a believer is a victim of this kind of undeserved suffering, the path of trust in God is the way to go. Let him retaliate. And he will. Particularly if they persist in it and keep it up. It may not be tomorrow, but it's going to be around some corner and it's going to hit them. For this kind of abuse... God knows the right time and the right way to bring wrath against those who come up against us. They will pay. And we're not talking about in eternity. That's one thing. We're talking in time. Some, some you know, rocks are going to be dropped out of the sky on them, metaphorically speaking. He knows where to hit them where it hurts. I'm not talking just physically. He knows where to hit them where it hurts and where to come down on them. So he knows the right time and the, and the way to bring wrath against those who come against him. Avoid, again, retaliation. This is also taught elsewhere. Uh, I got the verse in Proverbs 24, 29, which reads, chapter. All right. Do not say, thus I shall do to him as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. Don't do that. See, this is the book of Proverbs and all these pieces of advice. Jesus set an example in this regard as he endured those who persecuted him. He had the right touch at every moment. They came down on him hard. And I'm not just talking about the crucifixion. I'm talking about what the Jews did to him and the court and all the kind of stuff and the way they mocked him. But he knew who he was. And he knew he would be vindicated. And he knew that he was, that he was it was prophesied that he would go through this this intense abuse when they thought they had him and they, were, and they were gonna do what they could do. But even in the midst of all they could do to him, they could only do so much and that was it. In 1 Peter 3, for you've been called for this purpose since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. An example. And while being reviled, this is, this is, this is a verbal attack. Oh, if you're the son of God, then blah, 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 all that mess, you know? He did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats. He's God, but he uttered no threats from his humanity, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And then, of course, this was the path to the actual bearing of sins. <clears throat> so, Uh, I, yeah, okay. Uh, 
Where opportunity presents itself, follow the formula of verse 20, which is a quotation from Proverbs 25, 21, and 22. Also note Luke 6, 27. God will give you the wisdom if you have the poise and you can keep your STA in check if you come under attack for being a believer, for righteousness and all that. Now the Jews of Jesus' day, the, the religious Jews of Jesus' day, this is what they thought. He brings this out. But I say to you who hear, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Uh, <clears throat> Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. Whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Let him do his thing. Give to everyone who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. Et cetera, et cetera, here. Uh, Doing well towards an aggressor, if opportunity presents itself, results in divine wrath falling on him. That may not be your motivation at the time, but you're told to do good and let God take care of the person. Deal with them. Okay? Let's suppose you go down this path, and it all happens just like you heard it in this Bible class. You suffer at the hands of this person. Uh, burning coals on his head, of course, is figurative for severe divine judgment, if necessary. And by you stepping back, you open up that door. Now, if you take your own revenge, forget it. God isn't going to intervene in that way. If such a situation occurs where the believer leaves room for the wrath of God and it falls and it falls on him on an enemy do not rejoice in this if you hear about it if you were in this situation and you hear down the road that this happened to this guy you don't start yeah 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 good 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 because then you got Proverbs 24, 17 to deal with. Just keep your cool. Just note it objectively. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Again, metaphorical for some, some event in their life that causes them of misery and pain and, and loss and whatever it does. <clears throat> and uh, that's your 27 and 17, 27, 17 and 18, nah. 18. Or the Lord will see it. You're celebrating and uh, very happy that he got nailed. And the Lord will see it and be displeased. With who? You. And turn his anger away from him. He'll back off. Now, probably most of us do not have any of this. I don't know. I mean, I've heard of someone on the job coming under attack for coming here. You know? Uh, and by one, by one individual in the workforce, 
And it should be, the, 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 it's none of his business where you go to church, if you go to church. So he has to attack this person. Well, there you have an opportunity. What I do is before I went in there and started working, I offer up some prayer, be sure I was in fellowship. If he starts on one of his verbal deals, just blow it off. You don't have to answer him. And if an opportunity presents itself to do good towards him, do good. If he's having difficulty with some part of the job or something, go over and help him. I don't know. You got, you got to do that. You're, you're, out, you're, you're out there. You take the doctrine. You, you're, on, you're, you're on the, you know, uh, face, facing the situation. I, we, had, uh, we had neighbors that, they, they, they weren't friendly. Let's put it that way. I mean, you, it, it was like it was painful if you said hi to them. You know, and all this, and I go, where's this attitude? And it was that way almost when we moved on the property. The, an attitude. Okay? But I, I'd see them out there, you know, walking out and getting the mail or whatever. Hi, how are you? I'd force their hand. Hi, how are you doing? So I had no, I, 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 I'm not going to return this kind of attitude. And when they're all running to their little uh, fallout shelter with the threat of a tornado, we didn't have one. We have God. Their dog's out running down the street. Well, I, I, I'm not, I can't run the dog down. and The dog's not going to come to me. So what's the next best thing I can do? Go knock on their door and say, sir, your dog is heading south towards the park. Go home. That's a good deed. I could have said, to hell with you and your dog. That isn't appropriate. Not appropriate at all. So, uh, and, and for no reason. You know, it's like, uh, we've had no, no contact with you whatsoever. You know, you're free to come to this church, not live next door to it. All these years, and you're a neighbor in, the, in that sense. So I, can, I could help you if I needed to, if there was something that I could do. Close a gate, do this, tell you about something that would be useful for you, information uh, for the protection of your property, or whatever it was in this case, a runaway dog. You know, that obnoxious one? that barked in the backyard by our bedroom window at night? Well, how do we deal with that? Well, we didn't throw a poison pill over the fence. We prayed. Brenda did it independently. Just shut that dog up. Suddenly, it, went, it, it quit. I don't know what happened to it. We didn't have the problem. It just tapered off to nothing. because it was so obnoxious. A barking dog right by your bedroom window in the yard next to me. Anyway, I'll let you go on that high note and uh, hopefully see you tomorrow night. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. May God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us and may we live according to what we heard this evening in Christ's name. Amen.